Learning objectives include various methods for microbial control. There are various methods available with us. Uh, they could be categorized into physical methods, mechanical methods, chemical methods, and biological methods. Uh, physical methods include heat and radiation. And heat has two forms, dry heat and also moist heat. This is the dry heat further be uh, classified into incineration and a dry oven. In incineration, we basically burn the object or the organism. And in dry oven, we provide a dry heat or air that is, or the environment in which the air is heated. So without burning directly, we kill the organism by heat, and that is called dry oven. Now, this heat, it has been seen that heat kills by oxidation. So oxidation basically is a process that kills the organisms by heat. And as I mentioned, there's a dry heat that could be flaming. Flaming is, is another form of dry heat where the example commonly used in lab is flaming of the platinum loop for transferring organisms, streaking organisms onto the, the, the plate. Incineration is another type of heat where we burn the organism. And hot air sterilization is, again, the same as dry oven. If you compare these temperatures that are able to remove or achieve sterilization, so these basically these methods here, we achieve sterilization, complete removal. And for complete removal, if we use hot air, the temperature has to be achieved at 170 degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, that thing that we want to sterilize uh, should stay for at least two hours. If we use a moist heat, we will talk uh, just shortly uh, about this moist heat, but just remember that the equivalent temperature in uh, when the, the type of heat is moist is 121 degrees Celsius, and it requires only 15 minutes. So you can see the difference between the two. If it's just hot air, the temperature is 170 degrees. And when it is moist, it has uh, steam in it, under pressure, of course. The temperature achieved is 121 degree. But because of the pressure there, steam pressure, this has more penetration than simple heat here. And only 15 minutes are required to completely remove the organisms from that object. As I mentioned, that there's a moist heat. And one of the examples is autoclaving. The other example is boiling. When we, we have a liquid medium, we simply can boil it. And that boiling does not eliminate the spores. So it is essentially a disinfection method. By boiling, we achieve disinfection only. But by autoclaving, we achieve sterilization, complete removal. This is a schematic diagram of an autoclave where the steam is produced in these ducts and then injected under pressure. So this steam is enclosed in a small container, creates that pressure. So when there's a 15 PSI, the temperature that is achieved is 121 degrees Celsius. And that is enough if we keep the object at this temperature, at this pressure, 15 PSI and 121 degrees Celsius for 15 uh, to 20 minutes. That is enough for achieving the complete sterilization or removal of organisms. It is very important that during autoclaving, you should not use aluminum foil, but most of the people I've seen in the lab, they use aluminum foil to, to cover the objects. Aluminum foil basically does not allow the steam to penetrate. And here, this steam penetration is very important for achieving sterilization. So instead, you can use simple paper, parchment paper or ordinary paper, you know, wrap it, or maybe a plastic paper, that is vena porous, that could be used. And this is a strip, or, or it's called a tape. It has a word engraved in it. They're not normally visible. This is called an autoclave tape. Sometimes there are just lines on the autoclave that do not show up normally, but when it is, uh, it undergoes through that pressure and, and, and temperature 121 degrees Celsius, then those lines would appear. Like here, you could see these here, lines. And this is also essential to monitor the process of sterilization. If these lines, you don't see the change in the tape, that means the temperature was not achieved. Although you did the process of autoclaving, but the sterilization was not achieved. So this is a, a kind of monitoring the process. Boiling basically kills lots of bacteria, most of the organisms that are in the present in that medium, but do not eliminate all of them. One way was boiling. If you pasteurization is another way 
of moist heat. Here, the we target the organisms that that can cause spoilage of the food, like the milk is pasteurized most of the time, wine and beer are pasteurized, and even these fruit juices could be pasteurized. Initially, the temperature that uh, Louis Pasteur uh, adopted was 63 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. It eliminated most of the organism. Pasteurization is not a sterilization, but it targets most of the organisms that can spoil the food. So the, the keeping quality of the food improves with pasteurization. There is another temperature, what we call high temperature short time pasteurization, and this is 72 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. And scientists then develop another te technique that if you increase the temperature to 140 degrees Celsius, and only you need to keep less than a second at this temperature, that milk sample or milk product or juice product, you have to keep that in less than a second, if the temperature is 140, the same effect that you achieve at 63 or 72 Celsius in 15 seconds and 30 minutes could be achieved in one second or less than one second. But remember, this does not eliminate all the organisms. So thermodiuric, those organisms that, that can survive heat or they like to grow in heat, they, they do not get eliminated. So, but normally most of the organisms are eliminated. There are other physical methods other than the uh, dry heat and moist heat. Uh, low temperature inhibits microbial growth. So we can keep our food after cooking, like in the fridge, and it can be safe, like for two two days or so. If we put the same thing in the deep freezer, it can stay for for weeks and months. And there is another way of uh, this is called uh, uh, it's also physical method lyophilization, where we freeze the sample and then take the moisture out of the sample. It's a process called lyophilization. So lyophilized things can stay for months. We have to preferably refrigerate them after lyophilization. It basically uh, extends the, the shelf life. High pressure could also be, be used, and in the high pressure denatures proteins. This could also be used for, for pasteurization or eliminating most of the, the bacterial load. Desiccation prevents metabolism, and desiccation means the removal of water. And that could be achieved by vacuum or by just a low heating, so the water evaporates like a dry meat can stay, has a longer shelf shelf life because b bacteria or organisms need water to grow. So if the water is not there, uh, they cannot grow. So this desiccation is another uh, method. Osmotic pressure, where we use, like for example, pickles, they have lots of salt in them. A lot of salt creates osmotic pressure and the organisms do not. They become kind of dehydrated, desiccated. So they, they cannot grow. So these are various other methods, physical methods. So in summary, physical methods uh, include heat, which has a dry form and moist form, and then there are other physical methods also, like low temperature, high pressure, and desiccation and osmotic pressure.